use up the pain to have to spray back. Thank you. 
calculation that says that the gas will now occupy 0 0.802, which is like a 20 times increase in the volume it occupies. Right? So if you were to somehow take a spray can that has 2 megapascals and this amount of volume, it's like you break the spray can cylinder open, the gas that it will occupy in the atmosphere is now 20 times larger. Right, so that's what I say. So how can we visualize this? Let's say this is just under the surface of the liquid and we can keep the gas under the surface of the liquid. If you break your spray can, that original volume is 0 0.04. The gas will occupy 20 times the volume, 0.80 meter cube now. Okay, but of course, uh, in real life, when you're using a spray can, you're not under the gas escapes, right? So, the gas escapes. The question is, if the, this is the same as if the wall of the cylinder was not broken, then you play under the liquid and you still spray out the liquid, right? Some volume will be outside the can and some volume will be inside the can. But the can remains at the same volume. So, for part B, you can just simply say, <coughs> The volume of gas that remains in the can cylinder in this case equal to the volume of the cylinder. So the amount of gas escape, volume of escape gas equal to V2 minus V cylinder so it's 0 0.8 0 minus 0 0.040 gives you 0 0.76 meters yeah. so your spray can will always keep the spray can's volume of gas inside the spray can no matter what you do to it unless you can reduce the pressure of the spray can to the environment that's the environment you can't do right? so now you should have two things that how spray cans work number one it's just adding the pressure from the environment and when you press it right here, opening the hole so that some gas can escape right, and you pump the pressure of the atmosphere in the moment you start using a spray can, it's pressure decreases it's effective that decreases the unit and number two, you can never finish using a spray can because there will always be some gas left in the can and that's the gas will always be that some liquid is also left in the can that can't be sprayed out in fact, um, depending on how vigorously you shake your can, right? It is quite inefficient that you're always eating something inside the can. Right? So cans, mm -hmm. like, can sprays are quite environmentally unfriendly, I think. Also, uh, there was an issue in the past where the gases that they used as aerosols right, were damaging to the environment. I think they are, they are, they are the ozone type gases. Easy to compress. That's why they use it in uh, refrigerators, right? in the refrigerators to compress.
No, I'd say that you grow from one life to another from this previous question. Yeah. Yes. So the only possible way that a X and Y are kept at that temperature, right? If they are stored in some kind of machine, whose temperature is that temperature. So any excess heat or is or will be deposited or transferred to the gas constantly.
Now here you can still use the secondary school equation. The pressure at the point, let's call this point P or P. Okay? Pressure at P equals to H rho G. Where H rho G is the height of the wall, the column of fluid, density of the material making up the column of fluid and G is like volume one. So to calculate this one is quite easy, right? You just need the height. The height is 10 to the power of minus 3 mm. This is the height. Then the density is given 13.6 times 10 to the power of 3. And then now you need G, so G is 9.81. If you don't know the geometry, can you tell me what this one is? Pressure investors. You want to do calculations? So no one wants to do this.
really substitute this whole thing here. And we're just going to take ratio from this equation, right? You can see that the root mean square speed square, so the mean square speed is proportional to temperature. We're just going to take the constant. Right? So we can take C2 over, C2 over C1 squared equals C2 over C1. So C2 is the square root of C2 over C1, and you take the C1 squared to the inside the square root. Up to this point, anyone not very sure what to think about algebra? Now we're just taking ratio from this equation.
cannot use this volume and this pressure because 100 degrees of pressure volume will be different. So you can use this pressure, this volume by 100 degrees, right? Alright, that's why I completely shows right? What is it? Oh, sorry, I just part D is not part C. No wonder, no wonder I'm having to talk with you. Sorry guys, I need part D instead of part C. My bad. It's the same thing. Okay. Sorry, I'm not. This is part D. No wonder I'm having to talk with you. My bad. This is part D. So, part C is just the same calculation with a slightly different variable. I think you'll have to talk with you. Thank you. 